Presently here, I got a bit of news. If I could just find it here, it um, was here a fortnight ago. <laughs> I uh, we have uh, a new way of uh, going to condense the news for you. You know, we're going to bring it right to you. Here's a long article here about a man who gets a divorce from his wife because she talked too much. It's a big one of our meat packers here. But uh, instead of taking all that time to do that, we will abbreviate it. Uh, here's the news. Meatpacker cans tongue. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason and I am in Vincennes, Indiana and I am just outside the place where comedian Red Skelton was born or so it says in the marker and I'm just right across the street from the museum that was um, named after him on the 100th anniversary of his um, birth in 2013. So who was Red Skelton? Well, if you're familiar with old old, old um, comedy, <laughs> I don't know the best way to put it. Um, yes, Red Skelton does definitely fit in that category. And as much as I hate to say this, but he was a little before my time. I didn't really know who he was, especially when he passed away in 1997. But if you, um, but several people were alive, you know, during his popularity, you know, especially with the Red Skelton show, which was on the air from 1950s during the 1960s. So you may want to ask your parents or your grandparents about him, and I'm sure they'll give you a positive response saying, yes, he was very funny. He's nothing like the comedians we had today. <laughs> I'm sure they'll probably say something like that. But Skelton was definitely, I mean, a true American icon. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, he still is, but... <laughs> But he always called Vincennes, Indiana his home. And I mean, he did a lot. I mean, he put his money where his mouth is with charities. And he was on the air for over 20 years with the Red Skelton Show. But however, CBS, which um, it was aired on, CBS decided to cancel that and a bunch of other old school variety shows because they felt that he was a little stale and outdated. And um, it was said that he was very bitter about that. But and then 1970s was kind of a personal turmoil as one of his ex-wives committed suicide and i don't know there was a lot of other stuff to get into but i'll go ahead and show you the historical marker about skeleton as well as i'll show you a little bit of the museum too so here we go and i doubt if anybody does live here but then again what do i know but here is the historical marker that was installed here by the indiana historical society in 2017 titled one of america's clowns and on the other side it says simply red skeleton but here is a little background on richard red skeleton he was born here in 1913 as a teenager he performed locally in minstrel shows and as a clown in circus by 1930s he performed on vaudeville stages became famous for skits such as dunking donuts <laughs> okay mgm signed skeleton to a film contract in 1940 advancing his comedy career he solidified fame in 1941 with debut of his national NBC radio show. And then it continues on the other side. During World War II, Skelton served in the U.S. Army and performed numerous comedy shows for troops. In 1951, he helped popularize television with The Red Skelton Show, which aired for 20 years and won multiple, multiple Emmy Awards. Skelton was remembered for on-screen characters like Freddy the Freeloader and for his iconic interpretation of the Pledge of Allegiance. He died in 1997. Alright, so I talked to a postal worker and she said that nobody does indeed live here. So, I think they're looking at opportunities to make this into, well, they got a museum across the street, but maybe like a little shrine for the late icon, who knows. <laughs> but. So a little bit about, a little bit more about Red Skelton. Yes, he was well respected, especially among Franklin Delano Roosevelt as he performed at um, some of his birthday parties during the 1940s. Um, 1980s, he would make specials for HBO, you know, kind of try to connect with a younger crowd, I guess. 
He was a recipient for many awards, um, especially like the Cecil B. DeMille Award, um, as it says on there, the Emmys for his writing and for best comedian, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Governor's Award, which is one of the highest ones for them, the National Radio Hall of Fame, and he's got two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in California, one for his radio career, one for his TV career. And his movie career did not happen overnight. Apparently during, I think it was 1932, um, he had a failed screen test and he tried um, doing his comedy routine that had worked on vaudeville and on stage, but apparently um, Hollywood didn't think it would <laughs> work on screen, but he would prove them wrong in later years. He appeared in lots of movies, and every year since 2005, with the exception of, I believe, last year and maybe this year in 2021, um, there is a Red Skeleton Festival where there are parades of clowns, family activities, live music. So it's kind of like a homecoming um, festival. So it's definitely a great way to remember the old legend. <laughs> that over there is Vincennes University. And in that red building where I'm going to take you, that's the Red Skeleton Museum. It is not open yet, but hopefully um, <laughs> I can uh, get in there sometime soon today. Now I'm sure this green um, AstroTurf wasn't there, but since nobody lives here, I'm just going to kind of walk around. So yes, I believe he, yeah, he was indeed born here. And one other thing about Red Skelton, one of his side projects was painting. Yes, he painted pictures of clowns. And today, you know, people would think that crazy people did such thing. Well, um, <laughs> I know it kind of sounds kind of weird in today's terms, but but he admired clowns. In fact, um, his um, it was either his father or his stepfather was once a clown for a nationally known circus. And Red Skelton wanted to be a clown, and you know when when he was growing up and of course he was one but not like the kind we know today you know with the makeup and all but he would go on and do a thousand over a thousand oil paintings of them and some of them can be seen at that museum so yeah <laughs> he was definitely an artist in his own right and sometimes he would use them to kind of visualize what he wanted for his sketches i am now approaching the red skeleton museum of american comedy However, it is not open at the moment. It'll be open in about an hour from now, so I've got to an early start, but let's take a look around, shall we? <laughs> that over there is a sculpture. It's a 9-11 tribute uh, memorial. It is called, it is called the Dusk and Dawn of the 21st Century. And here's a little plaque. And as I was saying earlier, he was involved in many charities. In fact, he was a Shriner, he was a Freemason, and that is Red Skeleton's Masonic symbol. He was a 58-year member of the Vincennes Lodge. <laughs> and here's a bench that was originally located at the newspaper, the Sun Commercial. Here's the plant that says it all. <laughs> June 10, 2011 was when it was um, made here. <laughs> and right there is the museum. There is a cost to get in. It would be cool to buy some souvenirs, but I don't want to wait too long. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they got some magnets and clown noses and a bunch of tourist stuff. So, but maybe some other time. Next time in, I'm, in Vindi I'm in Indiana. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason, just outside the place where Red Skeleton, the American legend, was born. So, yes, I mean, Red Skeleton, he's definitely in that field with Groucho Marx and Bob Hope. I mean, I don't know how he is compared to them, but, I mean, some may lump him into the same category. But either way, I mean, he was proud to call Vincennes, Indiana, the town I'm literally standing in, home. So this is Jason. This is for Historically Marked, signing off.